Hey guys, so I decided to give Azir this favor yet another try and I wanted to play with the slam skills because I never really played with the Dove Horse Forest Strength uh, Keystone from Chieftain. Uh, this one triggers level 20 Dove Horse Chosen. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Dove Horse Chosen when you attack with a non wall slam skill near an enemy. So this actually repeats your slam. However, that slam, it does have 100% more damage, but it cannot be exerted and it cannot be supported by, by Fist of War. I tried to make this build in a way where I would not rely on exerted attacks and get as much damage as possible like without exerting. And in perfect case scenario, this would hit for over 11 million average shield damage on the initial hit and then another around 6 million from the uh, Dimension of Horus Keystone. In addition to this uh, big hit, this is also Ice Crash and I do have 100% chance to freeze because of the Rushkal Doris Patience Amulet. I actually really start liking this amulet more and more because it just gives you 100% chance to freeze, shock and ignite. You still need to hit uh, with those right elements to apply those uh, ailments. But since I don't have any sources of uh, chance to freeze and I'm non-crit and I cannot miss, I just always freeze. And this works defensively also so well because I also have vengeance. If enemies hit me, vengeance rocks and it freezes those enemies. Like it's a big slam but it's a slow hitting skill so it's not gonna be for everyone. And as I mentioned, this build has like so many different conditional things and, and just requirements in order to have all the damage. The list of requirements is almost as long as a list of requirements for guys on girls dating profiles. <coughs> it must be chilled and frozen, but not just a bit. It must be chilled for at least 30% and the freeze must last for more than a second. Because I need heat shiver and I like to take my time doing a long big slam. Ancestral Warchief has to be summoned and it must apply Combustion and 30% Bone Chill for maximum satisfaction. Xo, xo. You must also cast Hydrosphere next to a target. No, no, a bit more to the left. Right there, yeah. No, more a bit to the right. Perfect. Hydrosphere must also be hit by Warchief Totem and then it starts pulsating, exposing the target to cold and applying two juicy courses, but one of them will only work when target is on low life. You're also gonna have to buy me a couple drinks, a little taste of hate, a little taste of sulfur, XD, then you must get really close to the target and intimidate it. You also must have endurance charges lost recently and then gain some frenzy charges. And then, oh, then you can slam, but to be honest, it's not going to work anyway. You are just too slow and the size of your HP bar is just too short for me. Ooh. I'm not sure if, if this was cringy or not, so let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I, as you can tell, this build has so many different conditional things that you will never have all that damage. And like a true damage is probably around like 6 million, maybe 7, 8 million with everything combined, including the secondary um, slam from the Tavhoas node and like I don't really have a lot of HP but to my surprise I do feel pretty tanky. I do have two sources of endurance charge generation. I believe I'm running at what five or six endurance charges max. I also have immortal call on left click. I have fortify. I have freeze like really strong freezes. Only the end game bosses cannot fully be slowed down. Unless some enemies also are resistant to like chill, freeze and, and exposure. I also do have like each time I use Warcry I recover 15% of my maximum HP. Also using Taste of Hate uh, which means physical damage from hits taken as cold. Although I probably don't need that. I don't have much armor like 5.3k. So overall like this is not a very serious build I guess I would say. I am using Heat Shiver and it was originally I was using Trinity but it was really really annoying ramping up Trinity because every time I get more cold damage I also get even more fire damage. So in order to like balance Trinity I have to get cold penetration without getting like fire penetration or without raising flat cold damage. So I just remove Trinity in the end and just use concentrated effect which isn't as good but and it also reduces the AOE quite noticeably but it's still it's still decent and you, you remove one of the conditions. While this may not be a, a serious build and most of you probably not gonna like this, there still may be some of the ideas for all mechanics from this build that you could incorporate into other builds. 
like I think Rashkaldora's patient is just really amazing with this idea like Rashkaldora's patience vengeance and then like pulverize to make vengeance bigger so enemies hit you they proc vengeance they get hit and they all always gonna get frozen as long as you have some cold damage and vengeance actually does not have full conversion so I cannot even run physical reflect maps I, I once ran physical reflect and died because I forgot that I don't have full conversion for vengeance but the vengeance still hits pretty hard with the with the cold and it can still freeze enemies quite well uh, the other thing I linked ancestral war chief with the bone chill and combustion I need to chill uh, strong targets for 30% with ancestral war chief for the bone chill to take full effect in path of building it doesn't it doesn't distinguish what source chill uh, if you add bone chill to the ancestral war chief and then enter 30% chill effect it will consider it as ancestral war chief chilling for 30% which isn't really gonna happen because ancestral war chief does not really hit very hard so it's not even gonna be very reliable correct numbers in pub intimidating cry exerts only two attacks in in this case the first hit let's say it freezes for like one second you have to land a second hit while the enemy is still frozen for the heat shiver to take full effect right the problem is you need to wait almost two seconds for the fist of war to go off cooldown to be able to slam hard enough again same goes for the two second cooldown on the uh, tower horse uh, node so the enemy is not gonna be frozen for two seconds and you don't even have like guaranteed intimidate so the only guarantee intimidate is using intimidating cry next to a boss so essentially you you have to use intimidate after after you encounter the boss not not like before now many people ask like why am i using cast on crit in the series disfavor i'm not blocking anything with cast on crit this is anomalous cast on crit it is getting an extra fatigue quality and that means it's getting 50 percent more attack damage same goes for the divergent pulverize it is giving me 40% less attack speed, but it's also giving almost 100% more melee area damage. Another cool thing when using Rush Caldera's patience is that your held of ice will also have 100% chance to freeze. And once that happens, heat shiver triggers, the held of ice itself will also gain 100% of, uh, of the cold damage as extra fire. So it's also gonna do more damage. And it's gonna be easier to kind of chain, chain explode enemies. Another thing, using Dawn Strider Boots, which gives 100% increased effect of buffs, your Ancestral Totems grant while active, and uh, even if the Totem dies, you still maintain that buff for 4 seconds, but you can only have one uh, Ancestral, which is fine, because you don't need attack speed. So, while Ancestral War Chief gives 32% more melee damage while the Totem is active, you put these boots on, you get an extra 32% more. So, these boots give a lot of damage. You also get as a Chieftain another 100% effect of your ancestral so that this node is also worth another 32 percent more capping resistances was a bit of a struggle before you get endurance charges and getting enough attack speed so that it does not feel too bad is is also a bit of a challenge other than getting attack speed on the passive skill tree you can also get like guaranteed onslaught with the sleepless uh sleepless sentries you just place a totem and for the next four seconds you have onslaught there's also a worker node, so I went with the Megalomaniac. Uh, I also needed a bit of mana leech, attack mana leech, not physical mana leech. And also this comes with the attack speed, so that's also great. Uh, the third one doesn't really matter, but just one damage, I guess. Another important thing is to get freeze duration. There aren't that many places where you can get freeze duration. So you can get it on gold mastery, but it's a bit too far on the passive skill tree. But getting that 60% increased freeze duration would be very nice because you are attacking so slowly that you need to freeze enemies for at least one second before you can attack again. That's how long my attack time is. My attack rate is just barely over one attack per second. So I need enemies to be frozen for one second so I can slam again for maximum damage. So, in order to get more freeze duration, I went with the Astonishing Afflictions, which gives 10% increased duration of elemental ailments on enemies, which isn't as much. And also, effect of non-damaging ailments makes the applying chill, uh, well, stronger chill. Also, combined with the chilling presence, because I needed extra, like, uh, conditional things, uh, like this one, damage penetration, 10% cold resistance against shield enemies. Well, it also works defensively, it slows enemies down, but I also needed this for the Trinity, because I needed enemies to be chilled before I even hit them, so that I can get cold penetration and ramp up Trinity better, but in the end, I still dropped the Trinity, so 
even the cluster jewels are not really optimized at this point anymore. So yeah, I'm not gonna talk about every single uh, detail of this build, but I will include path of building import code in the description. I may still do a number zero disfavor build soon, but right now I'm doing a curtain call minor build. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like that, I kind of made a mistake and will have to replan a bit. If not, I'll probably rework that build into Whispering Eyes bossing build, and after that we'll see we'll see how it goes because we still got like around 40 days left for for this league. But there is a new action RPG coming out, Super Fuse, which I do want to check out, which is coming out on Fete Fest, I believe. I'm not sure exactly when, so I may actually check that game out and probably at some point maybe do a like a, a review i don't think it is a full release it's like a an early access or, or open battle or something like that so for now thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye bye